Thank you, moderators, for your introduction. I'm a surgical resident in Seoul National University Bundang Hospital. It's a great honor for me to present here in SAGES. And me nor any of my co-authors have any disclosures to speak of. So laparoscopic liver surgery is being performed worldwide, and it is increasing exponentially. There have been some reported advantages of minimally invasive surgery in hepatectomy. We can see that there are some studies that favor laparoscopic surgery for factors such as complications, blood loss, transfusions, hospital stay, and even oncologic resection margins. However, unlike this ongoing trend for minimally invasive surgery, there is still little evidence for laparoscopic liver resection, LLR, for intrahepatic cholangiocarcinoma. Only about 2 or 3% of LLR is performed for ICC, and most evidences are case reports, and there are probably about only five reported comparative studies about comparing LLR and open liver resection in literature. This is mainly due to the fact that intrahepatic cholangiocarcinoma itself is a very rare disease, and there are also concerns regarding lymph node dissections, and there is poor, poor prognosis, very easy recurrence of this disease, so there is little evidence for laparoscopic liver resection in ICC. The purpose of this study was also to compare the long-term outcomes of liver resection uh, of laparoscopic liver resection, LLR, with open liver resection, OLR, in patients with ICC only. So patient, so this is a retrospective study that includes patients who underwent liver resection for intrahepatic cholangiocarcinoma from August 2004 to October 2015. We excluded the patients who had combined hepatocellular carcinoma and those who were planned for palliative surgery only. We divided the two groups into laparoscopic liver and open liver resection groups. This is our typical setting for laparoscopic liver surgery. We use the CUSA, the energy device, monopolar, bipolar, electric cautery devices, and sometimes laparoscopic staplers, depending on the operation. The primary outcome was three-year-old, three-year overall survival and disease-free survival. Secondary endpoints were operative outcome, factors that influenced survival, and recurrence patterns. We, for statistical analysis, we used the Kaplan-Meier and the Cox proportional hazards model. We also performed the propensity score matching to adjust for confounding variables. We used patient age, sex, tumor location, and extent of hepatectomy, nodularity, and the liver state to calculate for the propensity score. We defined this minor and major resection according to the definition by the international consensus for laparoscopic liver resection. So minor resection is one that has two or less segments resected, and HEP major is anything more than that. This is the flow chart, which is a, looks a little small right now. So 141 patients underwent liver resection during the period of study. So there were among them, there were 39 who had combined hepatocellular carcinoma, so they were excluded. Palliative surgery was planned for 11 patients, so they were also excluded. So finally, we had a group of 91 patients, and they were further divided into 61 patients for the open group and 30 patients for the laparoscopic group. There are the patient demographics. Mean age was about 60s, and more than 60% were male. There was no significant difference in most of the factors. But here we see that there are a larger portion of patients with major liver resection in the open group. So we adjusted for these factors, as mentioned before in the methods. So that we had, after propensity matching, we had 18 patients in each group, and there was no difference in both groups. This is the table for pathological and operative outcome. There was more lymph node dissection in the open group, and which also has, had a difference in the pathological node staging. After propensity score matching, the two groups did not have any statistical difference. Operation time was a bit faster in the open group, though, but there was no significant difference. Before the propensity score matching, we can see that the hospital stay is faster and shorter in the laparoscopic group. And actually, after propensity matching, the significance, statistical significance disappeared, but the mean difference still had a, had a difference about nine days. Yeah. So after propensity score matching, the median follow-up was about 29 months each. 
This is a survival analysis of all groups. The left graph shows the three-year overall survival, and the right is a disease-free survival. Overall survival was similar, and disease-free survival was not statistically different, but it seemed like the laparoscopic group had a higher disease-free survival. This is a subgroup analysis where we excluded. There were six patients who had open conversion to, um, from laparoscopic to open liver resection. We excluded those groups and did the analysis again, and still they showed no significant difference in overall survival, it, but it seemed like the laparoscopic group had the higher disease-free survival. After propensity matching, there was no statistical difference between both groups. So we, we also did the Cox proportional hazards model for the factors that influence survival. This is the factors that influence the three-year overall survival. Any factors that had a p-value of 0.2 or less were included in the multivariate analysis. So factors such as age, preoperative treatment, ser liver cirrhosis, and tumor size were included in the multivariate analysis, and they showed no statistical difference. This is for the disease-free survival. Factors such as preoperative treatment, adjuvant adju chemotherapy, and cirrhosis, tumor size, nodulity, lymph node dissection, node pathological node staging, and open versus aposcopy were included in the multivariate analysis, where well, two factors showed significant uh, influence for three-year disease-free survival in the multivariate analysis, which was tumor size and nodularity. We also had a look at the recurrence pattern for 39 patients who had a recurrence. The most common was hematologic, which was followed by hepatic, peritoneal, and then local regional or lymph node metastasis. So then in conclusion, laparoscopic liver resection for intrahepatic cholangiocarcinoma had a similar three-year overall survival and disease-free survival compared to open liver resection. Laparoscopic liver resection seems, seems safe and feasible, which may show shorter hospital stay without compromising uh, oncological outcomes. Thank you, and <laughs> that'll be it.